Hey guys and welcome to Birmingham in the UK. This city is the second largest city in the United Kingdom yet they don't have a single underground metro line. They do have something called the Midlands Metro but it's more of a light rail line rather than a full heavy rail underground line as seen in the London Tube Network. So the basis on this is that I'm proposing it's you could call this a rapid transit but it's I would consider it more of a people mover considering that the stations in the center city of Birmingham are sometimes 0.2 miles apart so it's really a quick people mover from the main railway stations to the offices and also to move people around this wonderful city in the southern end it becomes more of a suburban line and it connects to Kings Norton in the south and Aston in the north connecting with the main railway lines for people wanting to commute to further destinations. It is a sec as I said it's the second most populous city in the UK and it desperately needs some type of urban transport solution given its hodgepodge of roads that it is right now. So without further ado, let's go. So the, the southernmost station is Kings Norton station. It's on the same as a main line which goes actually to Birmingham New Street which is a later stop on the People Mover Line. Now the People Mover Line will continue on these existing yet unused tracks here which will be electrified for this new line but really nothing much besides that and the new stations. Third rail will be needed. Sturgeley is the next station. It, now these are just residential areas that could benefit from commuting towards the downtown area without having to use a bus or driving towards nearby stations on heavy rail lines that already exist. After that, in about 0.7 miles, which is actually pretty long for this route, is Kings Heath, again another residential station. There are also a couple of businesses down here as you can see. So a couple of people working in this area but living in the downtown can commute to this station and take a bus. But I think it's mostly a residential stop. Mosley is the next stop, similar situation, residential. Now think of this as like the outer reaches of the London Tube. For example, zones four and five pass through very similar scenes as this. So you could expect similar type stations, obviously modern since this is a new line, but similar stations. I believe this line's already grade separated, but if not, under process can be made to make it grade separated. The last station that is above ground and this one's actually elevated based on the old railway line is Basel Heath and here you're starting to get into some more industrial areas so this could also be a departing stop in the morning not to mention there are a lot of people nearby that live here that probably work in the downtown that are relying on buses on the overcrowded streets so instead, they can use this station instead. Right after Basel Heath, the line will deviate from the existing railway line and go underground into a deep tube. Now the deep tube will be very similar to how the London Underground is built. This entire train, I think, will only have four carriages per train as opposed to seven on the London Underground because stations are relatively expensive too construct and I don't think the ridership will be that high. It'll be pretty high but I don't think that many seats are required on such a system here. In fact only standing room may be fine. Maybe longitudinal seating but latitudinal seating is not really required for a line that's this short. This station is Hayden Circus and this is the first station that approaches more built up areas of the Birmingham area. After that the line curves towards the northwest and eventually to the north and it enters Highgate which is a nearby park and also a lot of industrial areas. However, it's only at Wrentham Street that more commercial businesses start to show up. So this is where we start to get into the more inner areas of Birmingham and where people can likely go from their residences to close by shops, eateries, work, all of that. So this really becomes an underground deep tube line. Chinese Quarter is next, name is self-explanatory. On small Blue Brook to Queensway are some of the tallest buildings in Birmingham, 
So this is the quickest way to access those buildings. Next station is New Street. Now New Street is Birmingham's main railway station. Lots of trains from the Midlands trains to the Virgin trains and other local regional trains stop here and they come from quite a big area as you can see within the West Midlands County area, not including nearby Coventry and other towns nearby. So all these people will be converging on New Street. How do they get to work from here? With this new line, it would be easy just to take a couple of stops to some areas not already served by some railway lines. So they would otherwise have to take a bus and trying to take a bus through these roads, especially crossing New Street is really hard. You could try walking, that would take a while. So I think the easiest way is by the people mover. Next station, Cathedral, similar situation, lots of businesses in this area. Snow Hill is next. This is actually where it interchanges with the existing Midlands Metro. So it's another transfer point for the people mover. These are, this station is only 0.2 miles apart. So you can tell that this is a people mover just meant to move people quickly and not really meant for the highest speed option because let's be real, this is a city. People will likely be walking to these stations, not taking a bus or driving. Next station north is Lancaster Circus. Now this is more of a commercial district rather than office district as we saw further south. And the last underground station is Dartmouth, near Dartmouth Circus to be specific. Though I had to deviate the line towards the east a little to get open room to make this an elevated line just north of Proctor Street. And just north of Proctor Street, this is all going to be new alignment, by the way. This green will be an elevated line. Now, some of the parking facilities of these buildings may have to be shifted, but I don't think any major demolitions will have to be required. At the most, a stacked elevated line with like northbound above the southbound, which is all on the roads, could be done. But I think that may not even be required as there is enough space for a dual, dual track line. The next station is Oliver Street. Now we're going back into some more industrial areas. Then it's Thumble Mead Mill Lane. Again, similar situation. It also connects towards the Eastern warehouse districts pretty easily via driving or bus. Now here, as I said before, bus is not really needed in the center city. Here, I think it would be better to place a bus system here. We would encourage more people to use this line and make it more profitable. Finally, the last station is Aston, which is a major junction is in the northern Birmingham area, right north, actually just south of what is known as Spaghetti Interchange. If you want to know about that, research it online. So yeah, that's the entire line. Now I said deep tube line, I don't want to make it too deep as people are going to be using their time to go down long escalators. So make it as shallow as possible without having to go cut and cover because this line does not follow any street pattern. It instead follows where the businesses are in a nice northwest, I mean, no, southwest to northeast configuration with a slight C through the downtown core. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I think you see the benefits from such people movers. I would convince this to be moved forward, convince the government and local officials with this. Now I don't live in the UK but I do have experience with people mover systems and I think implementing one in Birmingham would be a nice addition towards the city. Thank you and goodbye.